What did you think of that video? Let me hear you, Facebook. What did you think of that video? What do you think? Very powerful. Very, very powerful. What about, oh my God. what about it did you think was powerful? What stood out to you the most? Well, the mere fact that um, she was going through all these struggles and um, apparently she seemed like she had almost um, given up and given into, um, you know, what's taken over her family. But then with the reassurance and the, and the encouragement from, from a friend, then, you know, she, she reclaimed back, you know, her rightful place and she take charge of her home. And not only it like it was the husband, but it was the work of the enemy. Yes. And she uses the word of God, yes. you know, that makes it even so powerful, yes. you know, and um, that's how you defeat the enemy. You know, it's not us, the person, you know, but it's the, it's the enemy that works among us, mm -hmm. you know, and um, she, she uses the word of God and take claim back her life. Yes. And she overcame and she felt it. And I felt it too, that she overcame. Yeah, I felt it too, watching that movie. I was just, I got up, I was like, yeah, get out. So, yeah. Um, you know, it empowers okay. me. And um, what else? Before I make somebody was paying attention to me. Come on, Jackie, speak up. I know you're there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for her. <laughs> My analyst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's on. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I just texted. <laughs> I know. We want to hear the voice. <laughs> I don't really have anything to add. It's pretty, pretty appropriate what you said. It's just, you know, we have to serve him notice because he does attack us um, through our loved ones because we don't ex um, expect that our loved ones are going to do that. And, um, and we do that a lot through unforgiveness. Uh, somebody once said, um, unforgiveness is like drinking the poison and waiting for others to die um, because it eats away at us, you know? Yes. Yes. Anybody else? She followed godly advice. Yes. Godly advice, yes. That 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 lady told her exactly. She didn't tell her what she wanted to hear. Um, the part that you didn't see was she asked her to write down some stuff about her husband. What she did was started writing down everything negative, everything negative that she could think of. She was writing it down. And I encourage you, if you haven't seen that movie, please, The War Room. <laughs> Please watch that movie. It's very powerful. So she gave the list to the lady. The lady was like, wow, this is three pages long. And she was like, well, I could go on. I have a whole lot more to say about him. And that's when the, the, the mother said, well, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read that. You know, and she started to speak to her about grace. What is grace? Does anyone know what grace is? It's God's willingness to um, forgive us. It's yeah. God's willingness to, to, um, to have died for us because it's... Um, can he do it? Yeah. Did he want to do it? Yeah. So it's his willingness yes. to, um, to give us, to show us mercy, yes. because as she said in the caption there, yeah, we don't deserve it. And if for a second, we believe that um, we're better than somebody else because, you know, we don't live in a glass house. It, it, it's not. And that is, I think, one of the Achilles heel of, in relationship. We're always pointing the finger at the other person. But my, as my mom always says, when you point the finger, the big thumb is pointing right back to you. Mm -hmm. And we always want to, um, as the woman had said, she points out all the wrongs that the husband does and, and never, you know, I, she, she, even she herself didn't even think that she had any issues more so than the husband because he racked up a list, yeah. you know, yeah. but it, it, when it comes to forgiveness, it's not just about the small things or the big things or the huge, huge things. Yeah. It's yeah. as she said, it's about grace. And, and even though her list may not have been as long as her husband, mm -hmm. she felt she deserved it and he did it. Yeah. And that's the yeah. mistake that we often make with each other is that, you know, you did more than I do. So, um, you know, I, I don't deserve as much uh, um, talking to as you do. Right. Right. And so I love I love that you said that because that is so true. A lot of times in relationship, we tend to look at the other person's fault more than mm -hmm. the good that they do. We tend to mm -hmm. in that list. 
there was nothing in there that tried to say, well, you know, let me think about something positive that he has done. Everything was negative. Everything was bad. Mm -hmm. And so this, 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 this mother that, that took a hold of her, if you heard what she said, she said, this is uncomfortable because the mother now started to make her, you know, refocus her thoughts and her vision mm -hmm. to now turn the camera on herself. Like mm -hmm. you deserve God's um, grace. Do you deserve grace? And that was very uncomfortable for her to mm -hmm. talk about because now the spotlight was on her to make her, yeah. think, you mm -hmm. know, that you are now, you know, crucifying your husband for, what if it was you? Would you want God to be merciful to you? And I feel like that's how we should always look at everything in life, especially our relationships when we come in contact, you know, with people, our spouses, look at it in that way. So two people wrote the exact same thing that, that grace is God's unmerited favor. And yes, it's mm -hmm. the exact same thing, right? As, as um, Sister Jackie said, and that's mm -hmm. true. It is, we don't deserve it. That means that we don't deserve grace. We don't deserve it. Every punishment and judgment that should have um, fallen upon us because we were born in sin, we, mm -hmm. deserve, we deserve judgment. We're mm -hmm. not perfect to the point where we could say, well, I deserve to live. Who says that? Yeah. Who, who thinks that, you know, that's someone who thinks very highly of themselves. But when you're very humbled, you understand that, man, it's only because of God's grace and mercy. You know, this morning I woke up in, 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 my, in my house. It's about this morning. It was raining outside and I laid on the bed for a moment and I started to think about this exact same thing about God's unmerited grace, his, his favor, his mercy. And I said, man, I started to think about the, the crazy things that I did when I even wasn't saved. And sometimes even after I got saved, how ignorant I was to think that, you know, God wouldn't cut me off or God. And I said, man, God, you love me beyond my ignorance, beyond my craziness. When I didn't even deserve your mercy, when I didn't deserve your grace, you still gave it to me. You applied it to me even when it wasn't deserved. And I started to think about relationships, right? Sometimes I was spouses they do things to us and we feel like they don't deserve I'm tired that's it that's it but if you apply grace right grace to that person you realize that you'll never run out of um, forgiving them come on somebody think about mm -hmm. it it's the same way how God deals with us he expects us to show grace and mercy to others and so you know this 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 um video was very powerful because I love the way how she allowed her to see herself rather than to always look at her husband or her spouse in a negative negative. and so I'm challenging you I'm not going to be long with you tonight because I believe that God wants to do something in some relationships and in some marriages tonight and for those who are not married, I do believe that it's time for you as yourself to take a personal look into your life and, and just think about, is there somebody that has wronged me? Is there somebody that has done something to me and I need to apply grace? Even right now, I want you to think about that husband, right? That hurt you to the core. Um, it might have been today. It might have been five minutes ago. It might have even been five years ago. But I want us to take a deep look back. This is going to be a very uncomfortable night for a lot of us because a lot of us don't like to face reality. We don't like to face the truth. We like to mask it and make everybody think that everything is okay and I'm fine. Meanwhile, on the inside, we are hurting. Meanwhile, on the inside, we are dying because there are things that we have not been able to resolve in relationships. And so God wanted me tonight specifically to pray, to pray. I'm not going to do a lot of talking, but to pray tonight because um, there's a lot of things that need to be broken in relationships. There's a lot of relationships that need mending and it can only mend through forgiveness through forgiveness. You can't move forward. You're wondering why you're always stuck. You're wondering. And, and, and like I said, when you think about what forgiveness is, if you really, really, really forgive somebody, the next time you and them get into an argument, you're not going to bring up that, that thing that, that hurts you, right? So how do you know when you're always hurt? And that's something that God measured me by. If you keep on talking about something, you can say, oh, but I, I, I'm good. I don't have them up. You really do because you're still talking about it. That means that there's something in your heart that needs healing. There's something in your heart that needs to be mended because it still hurts you. And it's okay because we're human. We always have hurt. We always feel pain. We always feel, you know, things happen that break us down at times. It causes us to feel hurt, to cry, you know, to feel all certain type of ways. But the best thing about that is that God came to bring healing. God gave to, came to mend broken hearts. He came to mend broken relationships. He came to mend, amen, husband and 
wife relationship the way that he designed it to be. And the truth about it is that you cannot move forward unless you have forgiven each other right? Um, sometimes people don't talk about things. We don't speak about it. You know, we act as though everything is okay, but deep down on the inside, there's a little tension running around. There's a little tension going on because there's unresolved issues. Unresolved issues, they're not going to take us far. They're just going to keep us stuck in a rut, honestly, all the time where we're going around in a circle, right? And so the Bible tells us that if we don't forgive men their trespasses, if we don't learn how to forgive right? Then we're not going to, then God can't forgive us. And that's just the honest truth. So no matter how much we're praying and crying and screaming down the place, and this is going to be uncomfortable, but God can't forgive us if we have not forgiven our spouses, if we have not forgiven our friends, if we have not forgiven our mother, our father who abandoned us, we have not forgiven our children who have hurt us. There's a lot of hurt, right? Somebody said people need to forgive themselves first. Yes. And that is so true because the ultimate forgiveness sometimes is the things that we have done. And sometimes we, we hold on to it and feel as though we can't move on from that, but you can. Forgiveness is necessary for growth. How many people know that? Forgiveness is necessary for growth. You won't be able to grow unless you forgive. And, I, and, and forgive, how much time does the Bible say you're supposed to forgive? As often as it needs. 70 times seven and in then some. one day that's just in <laughs> one day <laughs> and so somebody say, one day i'm not forgiving nobody that much time in one day yes that's because yourself is telling you that you can't do it but when you apply god's mercy god's grace you find out that you're able to forgive because that you know as much times as i forgive i want god's forgiveness as much times as i can forgive because guess what your spouse is going to to do things to hurt you are they intentionally doing it? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe that they're doing it. But guess what? If things happen sometimes, right? You're in living with somebody. Somebody might say something. They might do something. And I want to I wanna say this, and this is not excusing anybody at all. But I want to say this for, for real, for real. Sometimes people act out of the hurt that they are enduring on the inside. They tend to take it out on the next person that's next to them. They transfer it, yeah counter transference. I don't know if any of you have heard mm -hmm. of that, but that's exactly mm -hmm. what I'm So I have been hurt. I'm carrying around baggage. I'm carrying around hurt. I'm carrying around unforgiveness. So the closest person to me is going to feel that wrath. And it just happened to be your spouse. It just happens to be you. And that's why it's very important to heal completely before trying to move forward. Because if you don't, you're just gonna keep on hurting everyone you meet. You don't intentionally mean to do that, but that's what happens. You, you just tend to hurt everybody hurt because that's what's on the inside. You are hurt. And so hurt people hurt people. I don't know how many people have ever heard that saying before, but when you are hurt, you tend to hurt others, right? Heal people, heal people, right? Forgiveness brings healing, it does, right? And so, um, there are many things that we have done in our lifetime, right? That we always would say, oh man, I can't believe that God has forgiven me for that, but he has. And so that, that goes to show us that no matter what our spouse, now, now listen to me, your spouses might say things to hurt you. They might do things that have hurt in your feelings. They have, you know, it happens, right? But that doesn't mean that you should, you still should not apply grace. And somebody might say to me, but they keep doing the same thing over and over. Give them grace. Give them grace. Um, Lady Brown, I just wanted to mention something about the clip that you had shown before mm -hmm. where um, the woman was indignant about what the lady said to her about uh, showing grace to her husband. Yes. And many times um, we tend to feel slighted. Yeah. And um, she said, you know, take care of the things that you need to take care of, essentially, mm -hmm. and, and, and let Jesus take care of the rest. And um, I, I invited a couple to my church recently, two of my clients, and um, the wife gave her heart to the Lord in one week and the husband followed suit. And, it, you know, I, I, it, I've been talking to her here and there and, um, you know, they're, they're having some issues, some some marital issues. And um uh, without making a long story too short, she, they've got pre-existing issues. Mm -hmm. And um, she was saying that, you know, I'm going to go through his phone and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna do and I said to you, you know what though? I said, you know, 
you're new in your walk. I said, I think what you should do is just focus on getting to know Jesus. I said, it, just pray about it, but, but don't get in his face about it because it, 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 you, you pray about it. I said, I know a lot of couples who have unsaved husbands or unsaved wives and they, they, they live in essentially misery because, you know, they, they're going one way and, and, and the spouse is going another way. And it's difficult for them to connect yeah. on the same level. But um, basically what the woman said is what, what I was telling the young lady. Uh, um, and it was just, you know, take care of your side of the fence for now. Don't try, to, don't try to get into your husband's face about what you think he's doing and all that. Try to, try to heal yourself. Try to get, get connected and get closer with the Lord. Because it, 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 she wanted to get in her husband's face, obviously, in, in, the, in the clip that you showed. And the lady saying to her, no, you know, you deal with the stuff because you've got issues, too. <laughs> You're behaving like you don't have any issues, but you do have your, your fair share of issues. So a lot of times we have to really do a, a, a spiritual inventory on ourselves and really introspect. Because like I said before, most times we do not see um, what we're doing because we, we, where our vision is obstructed. It says in the Bible, before you pick the mold out of your eye before you pick the beam out of somebody else's. Because what if your vision is obstructed, you're not going to see what's going on. And then this is many times that's how arguments begin because oh, you just keep pointing the finger and you're not checking yourself to see, could I have done this differently? It, 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 did what I say or not say result in this fight that we're having and constantly bringing up things that should not have been brought up and, and letting it go. So I just wanted to make that point. Yes, and I actually agree with you a thousand percent because what it is is, and that's honest, that's honestly true. When you when your judgment is or when you're upset, let me say this: when you're upset, honestly, most of the time when you're upset, you're especially with your spouse, right? Your main focus. If you think about what she, what this um woman was saying, we give place to the enemy to come in and to whisper. Mm -hmm to us and that's exactly what he does he starts to pinpoint all of the things that your spouse is doing wrong has done wrong so you start thinking about oh and this has been going on you know since i remember when and mind games yes mind games <laughs> think clearly because now we're allowing the enemy to whisper to us everything mm -hmm. so we keep feeding on that negativity feeding on that negativity mm -hmm. One thing that she said in the video that really stuck to me, and this has stuck to me for a long time from the first time I saw this video was like, you, you can't, you have to allow God to sit on the throne of your heart. Did you hear when she say that? Mm -hmm. you, there's no room for you and God to be on the throne of your heart at the same oh, yeah. time. That means that you have to step down. Mm -hmm. You have to step down because if you allow yourself to try to guide your relationship, you are going to be in trouble. You're yep. to, because we, our judgment is, 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 is not fair. It's, That's cute. It's, it's, yes, because it's vague. What we do is tend to look at the other person all the time, rather than to say, like you said, what is it that I could have done differently? Can I, what can I do to stop this argument? So what we do is continue the trend that everybody want to be right. And everybody wants mm -hmm. to and everybody so now we prefer to be arguing rather than having peace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no one wants to step down off of that throne you see this thing this ticker that's up oh, here yeah. mm -hmm. let me tell you it has a lot of chambers in it i read up about it the other day this heart has a lot of chambers and so this heart if we allow it to get to go bad to allow things to keep festering and build up in it we're going to be in trouble especially about your mate that means that no matter what good they do you will not be able to mm -hmm. see them because your judgment or your thinking your heart towards them now is clouded it's it's negative everything negative so even when they're trying their best to do the right thing it's hard to see past that cloud and so that's why I love that statement that we have to step down off of the throne of our own hearts. Get down off of it. Let self die. We got to die to self, right? Mm -hmm. God, take control of our heart because he will lead us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. We allow the enemy to keep whispering to us and telling us what he's going to lead us. And then all of a sudden we're going to think that our spouse is our enemy. She told her that. She said, your husband is not your enemy. You guys need to come together and attack the real enemy. Get him out of your house. Get him out of your head. Get him out of your mind. Get him out of your heart. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? He's going to keep on feeding it. So now all of a sudden you're, you're even more angrier. 
you're angry, and then you're not just sticking to what just happened today. Your mind starts to wander about how they hurt you two years ago. Remember when they did that? And remember, because the, the devil, he's not, he, he likes to accuse people. That's his job. He That's his job. <laughs> accusations. And mm -hmm. so if we're not careful, right, we start to accuse them of things. And you did this on purpose. You, you hurt me on purpose. There's no way in the world that I would think that anybody that truly loves you wants to hurt you on purpose. But that's what the enemy wants you to think. Um, la lady Brown, yes. good night. Good night. This what? is Fiona all the way from Jamaica. And I'm so happy to be on with you, lovely ladies, wonderful women of God. I, as I hear you say that, I just want to edify me. Yes. That, okay. you know, one of the things too, we... As you said, yes, we tend to think that we are always on the right and we are the right one. And I am speaking as someone who has gone through a hurtful extramarital affair. And I remember even just recently, my 13-year-old, one day when I, you know, I was getting mad at a lot of things. And he said to me, mom, do you think that you are, you are the stronger one in the faith? And I said, yes. And you know what was his response? Well, act like it. Whoa. Therefore, and, and I'm telling you, that really held me from the other day. He said, you are to act like it. So if we think that we are right, we think that we are living, we are the better one, we are always right, then we need to act as being right. And I just want to say, we can look at it at a sense to say we have to think of God's unmerited favor in a sense that persons are dented, but they are still qualified. We are not the one who save. We are not the one who sanctify. And therefore, as long as we can see that, because if I can recall, I went through 27, a very hurtful time. And the young lady, I had to call her. And I said to her, listen up. I said some things to you. And though you hurt me, but as a child of God, I should not have said it. And I am apologizing. And she said, but you're not the one that should be apologizing. I said, yes, I am a Christian and I have to do what is right. And so I'm apologizing. And then I said to her, you need to allow the Lord to be the center of your life. I am asking you to accept him as your personal savior. Because listen up, I do not forgive sin what Jesus does. Yeah. Did you know that it was um, this morning mm -hmm. I was home and I received a text from her saying, I want to thank you for never giving up on me, even though I did not deserve it. And so I want to say to persons who are in hurtful relationship, it can happen. It has happened to me. I had to take the first step to, and apologize. I have to take the first step to let her know that, listen, I let you go. And I want you to allow the Lord to be the center of your life. And as soon as we release that, I'm telling you, you're better able to worship. You can sleep. Um, you can be happy. You can start to enjoy life because many times we fool ourselves to say, oh, I have forgiven. But sometimes if their names are called, if a little situation, realize that we're not sleeping, we're getting angry, our blood pressure goes up and, and we start to prosper, all of this, it simply means we have not forgiven. But in order for God to be able to forgive us, we have to know that we have to totally forgive those who have hurt us. That's what I want to share tonight. God bless you. Very powerful. Wow. I, I'm, that's my sister all the way from Jamaica. Yeah. I, am, I am so proud of you. I mean, that actually brought tears to my eyes because, you know, a lot of people would not have done that. A lot of people, it's hard. Right. But when you allow God to sit on the throne of your heart, that's an example. Right. She turned to the aggressor and said, I'm sorry. Right. Man, somebody just wrote it and I was going to say that. And it's so true. There is power in forgiveness. Do you notice when that that young lady, when she went to claim back her home, she said, I want my joy back. 
right? I'm taking my joy back because honestly, when you don't forgive, there is so, you, you lose your joy. You, you like, like, like my sister said, you lose your sleep, you lose everything. Your countenance changed because it shows on you because what's on the inside shows. Somebody said spiritual maturity. And that is so true. Oh my God. I'm so proud of you, sis. I'm proud of you. And I mean, to come on air and to say that, um, God bless you. God bless you. And I'm, I'm really, I, I, man, I'm clapping you. I'm cheering you on. I love you. I love you. Thank you. For thank you. Yes. yes. Love you so much, sis. And I thank you. Though you are so many um, way far from me, I thank you and your husband for your support. Really appreciate it. May the Lord continue to bless your union and to bless your ministry. Thank you. Thank you. I love Amen. you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Um, you know, so that that right there is a prime example. I'm talking about the movie, but this right here is real life, right? This is real life, real life, the power of forgiveness, the power of letting go, the power of allowing God to sit on the throne of your, and, and this is an example to us all, to me too, right? Because it shows us, right? It shows us that even in the, in the, in the situations where our spouses might have hurt us, we can go to them, right? And to make things right. Am I saying something? We can do that. But, you know, sometimes we allow our pride to take e our mm -hmm. ego, our mm -hmm. pride to say, you know, I, I'm not saying it because you're the one that hurt me, right? But if you think about the, the scripture, right, that the Bible says, if you know, right, that somebody has ought against you, you are to go to them if we're going to follow what the Bible says. And so my question to you before I pray, right, my question to you tonight is, which one do you, do, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer peace? Or do you prefer war? Which one do you want? Are you tired of fighting? Are you tired of going through the same thing over and over again? Are you tired of always bumping heads? And so it leads you to say, well, maybe I married the wrong person. No, somebody needs to come off of the throne of their heart and allow God mm -hmm. to be there. It has nothing to do with you marrying the wrong person. You need to give up. Give up your right for peace sake. And a lot of people, you know, I, I put something on Facebook today. I said that, man, it stirred, it ruffled a lot of feathers because people just been, so am I supposed to let somebody walk over me? It's not about anybody walking over you. We're talking about a real life husband and wife situation. We're not talking about kitty stuff here. We're not talking about children stuff here. Like, oh, am I supposed to let somebody walk over me? That's kitty stuff. It has nothing to do with anybody walking over you. But when you prefer peace in your home, you prefer the presence of God. You want your love to be shown even in the children, right? Look at her, her son. She said her son had to say, mom, you're the mature one. So act like it. I know that had her to think because I have yeah. an 11 year old son that likes to check us sometime too. That's how they are, right? Because how she acquitted herself, you know? Huh? No, I was saying it's how she acquitted herself. It's an indictment on the other young woman. She's got to handle her stuff, but your yes. your sister Fiona, it's how she acquitted herself yes. and and relieved the burden of, of, of unforgiveness. Because guess what? Can I tell you something? Some people think that when they don't forgive you, that they're holding you hostage. You're holding mm -hmm. yourself hostage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your forgiveness is not saying that you agree that the person hurt you. But what you're saying is that I want to let go. I want to have peace in my life because mm -hmm. honestly, you holding somebody hostage in unforgiveness is not hurting them. Honestly, it's hurting me. If I decide that I'm not going to forgive somebody, I'm not going to forgive my husband. I'm not going to forgive my, my friends. I'm not going to forgive my mother, you know, my father. I'm holding myself hostage as well. So I'm thinking that I'm doing them harm, but the real harm is coming to me. Right. Yeah. Most of the time, people don't even know when that you're angry with them. So you're That's the only the one. <laughs> That's the point. Some people don't even know that 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 you're angry with them and you're walking around <laughs> mad and bitter and you know you're <laughs> evil for them and you're having all type of things coming out your heart. You're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. Sometimes we, the, the things that we say out of our mouths, right, to our spouses, the things that we say to them, the hurtful things, and we think that we're we're damaging them. Right, mm -hmm. what you're doing is damaging the relationship. You're yeah. Because you're not allowing God to really, really take center. Tonight, I am challenging you to show grace. Give people grace. Give them God's unmet. Now, we're not gods, right? And it takes a whole lot of work to do. I'm not sitting here and tell you that it's easy, right? It takes a lot, right? You have to be, you know, really, really strong to forgive. 
So for you who are hurting tonight, I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your relationship. I want God to give you peace in the midst of the storm. I want God to give you peace in your home. But before I do that, before I do that, let me read something to you. Forgiveness is a form of love action. I'm going to say that again. Forgiveness is a form of love in action. And we can't get far in marriage without it. So you hear that if you can't learn to forgive, your marriage is going to be stuck. It's, forgiveness is, is love. Forgiveness is love. You forgive somebody because you love them, right? Mm -hmm. When you love someone, you're vulnerable with them, right? And vice versa. When someone loves you, they're vulnerable with you. Some people are going to be shocked that you're giving them grace. You're showing them love, but do it anyway. Don't let anybody turn you into a monster. Don't let anybody turn you into a monster, right? Don't become a monster. People are being mean to you. They're being nasty to you. Don't let that become who you are because that's not who you are. Wives that are mean to their husbands, it's time for a change. Husbands that are mean to their wives, it's time for a change. God is calling you, whether you're saved or not, to make a change in your relationship. You want it to work, it's time to change. Tonight is the night, the 27th of February, 2021. Get committed to change. Change your thinking, change your talking. Change your actions. Don't make excuses for yourself. It's time for change. If you want your relationship to work, it's time to change. Get yourself out of the way. Get your ego, your pride, get it out of the way and get committed in this marriage. Stop talking about, oh, I'm, I married the wrong person. No, change your behavior. Change your attitude, change your action, change the way you look at your husband, change the way you look at your wife, change your thoughts. You know, the, 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 the devil, he wants to show you everything negative about the person, right? But think about the good. They have not always been a bad person or a negative person. Don't base your relationship off of one situation or one thing that happened and now they're the devil. No. Things are going to happen. I want to let you know that, but extend grace. Your spouse will hurt you more deeply than anyone else in this world because they're the closest to you at this time. You're not living with your mom, you're not living with your dad, you're living with them, so they have access to you. So their hurt is, 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 is deeper than any other hurt you'll encounter, right? And this is because you value their approval and affirmation more than anyone else's in this world. You value their, what they think of you. And so when they do something to you, the reason why things hurt us, right, is because of who it's coming from. Am I right? Yep. The way how things, if, if it was, you know, I think David who said it, that if it was an enemy, right, I could understand if it was an enemy that did this, then I could totally understand. And you expect it too. I expect from, it because yeah. we're, what it was. Somebody that's close to me, my husband, my wife, my bestie, <laughs> right? Yes, they hurt you because they're close to you. Mm -hmm. But I want us to pray tonight. I want everyone to close their eyes tonight. I want you to think of something. Think of a situation. I want you to be honest, not to me, but before the Lord tonight. Those are the single, this applies to you too, because mm -hmm. there might have been situations that have caused you to feel hurt, to feel pain. But tonight is the night of release. Tonight is the night to let it go. Let go and let God. I want everyone, I can't see your faces because some people are on, you know, your camera's not on, but I want you to be honest tonight. If you want peace and tranquility, you want that love to flow in your home, I need you to be obedient tonight. And I need you to close your eyes, close your eyes. And I want you to think of that situation right now that has you captive. Nobody has to know, I'm not telling you to type it. I don't want you to tell me, I want you to think of it. Think of that situation, maybe even that person that hurts you. Think of a situation that has you hurt, that has you bound. Nobody knows about it, but every time you think about it, it brings you pain. It brings you sorrow to your heart. It hurts you. Come on, I'm going to give you a moment to think about it.
I want you to be honest. Think about it. What's hurting you? That deep wound that nobody knows about, that deep hurt, that deep pain. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel hurt. Healing is okay. Healing is good. Healing is necessary. And God sees tonight. He sees your heart. He sees how you're feeling. He sees the frustration. He sees the anger. He sees the built up tension. He sees it. And tonight we're going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this topic tonight. It's not popular, but it's what you have chosen, you have given me to speak about, forgiveness. My God, it's a powerful word, yet so many of us don't know how to utilize it, oh God, because things that have happened to us, it seems unforgivable. But I'm so glad tonight that you have sent your word. You told us that forgiveness, oh God, is love in action. Oh God, and because you loved us, you are the first example. You showed us what true love is. You died for us. You went on that cross. You willingly went. You weren't forced. Oh God, and because of that, you extend grace to us day after day, minute after minute. Many of us, we messed up so many times. But God, you have never turned your back on us. You have always extended grace and love to us. And tonight, oh God, I'm asking you that you would help us to do the same to our husbands, do the same to our wives, do the same to those that have offended us, those that have hurt us, those that continue to hurt us. Oh God, help us to extend grace to them. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every hurting heart tonight. You see the broken heart. You see the tears when no one is around that cry by themselves, that cry at night, that remember the pain, oh God. And sometimes it seems unbearable, but I'm so glad tonight, God, that you came, oh God, you're acquainted with our grief. You know what we feel. You know what we go through. And I pray tonight, oh God, that you will bring healing to every marriage, even right now, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that we will step down off of the throne of our hearts and we'll give you access to sit there, God, that you can lead us, you can guide us, you can tell us how to go about, oh God, that our marriages can be successful. I pray for every husband that's hurting because of their wife. I pray for every wife that's hurting because of their husband. Oh God, they're going on day by day, but there's hurt, words that were spoken, actions that were committed. God, you know about it. You saw it. You heard it. Oh, God, but I pray for healing and restoration of every heart tonight. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that your voice will be louder than the enemy's voice. Oh, God, sometimes you try to whisper to us, oh, God, to make us feel like our spouses are our enemies. But, God, we bind him up. We rebuke him. We rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And we bring healing. We pray that you will speak, oh, God, to us right now. Help us, oh, God, that we, oh, God, will love each other as you have commanded us to love, that we will, oh God, live how you have commanded us to live. Oh God, for peace sake, oh God, help us, oh God, to give up our right at times. Help us to forgive. Help us to even ask for forgiveness, even when we're in the right. Oh God, so many of us are prideful. We have our egos. Oh God, but I pray that you will break it down tonight, God, in the name of Jesus, and you will help us, oh God, to do the right thing that our relationships can work. God, you take charge of every heart tonight. You take charge of every mind in the name of Jesus our eyesight oh God the way how we see our spouses change it from a negative view to a positive view God in the name of Jesus let love flow oh God from us even to the children let your peace be in every home we speak peace to the homes of every couple tonight oh God in the name of Jesus let your presence dwell there let your peace dwell in every home let your forgiveness let your love let your mercy oh 
oh God, in the name of Jesus, but not just tonight, but even moving forward, whenever things happen, oh God, help us to remember this night that you came to extend grace to everybody. Oh God, we are not better than each other, oh God, but we are one, we're equal. So help us not to think more highly of ourselves, oh God, but help us to come down and to realize that if it wasn't for you, none of us would be here, oh God, but it's because you love us so much that you extended grace to us. We thank you, oh God, for even those who are not married, oh God, but they have been hurt. They have went through situations. Many have gone through divorces. Many have gone through heartbreak. God, you know about it, but you, oh God, can bring healing and restoration. You can bring forgiveness to the heart of your people. Those that are not speaking, oh God, because of hurt situations, let the conversation come. Let us be the bigger person at all times, oh God, showing that we are spiritually mature in you. Those that are not saved, I pray, God, that you will remember them, that you'll save them tonight, oh God, because we realize that, oh God, without you, we can't do marriage, oh God, because if we try to do it, we'll make a mess of it. But we need you, God, to take the lead. We need you to take the center. We need you, oh God, to be in the front, that you can show us what to do, where to go, when our hands, oh God, are tied, when our backs are against the wall. You take, oh God, control. You show us what to do. But, oh God, we don't let you lead, oh God, we will make a mess of our marriages. God, you, oh God, ordain marriages. It's something that you have created from the beginning of time. And the enemy, he doesn't like it. But God, I pray tonight that every couple will be strong enough to overcome the enemy. We won't let him win. We won't let him speak in our ear, but we'll allow you, God, to speak to us. We thank you tonight. Bless everyone tonight. Bless everyone. Bless every couple. Oh, God, bind us together in love, in unity, in strength. Oh, God, we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the deliverance. We thank you for the forgiveness tonight, oh, God. That tough heart that even right now was thinking that that's too hard for me, to, oh, God, to let go of. Oh, God, move upon that heart of stone tonight. Move upon that heart, oh, God. I feel it on the line that there's somebody who's still holding on, God, but you are able to break every chain. You're able to break every yoke, oh, God. Some have already decided that they're going to divorce, but, God, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus and we pray that tonight will be a new start oh God for us all we thank you for doing it right now God we believe that it is done we accept your will oh God for marriage that you how you have designed it and we give you thanks we give you praise we give you glory and honor we thank you for restoration we thank you for healing in Jesus name we say amen and amen amen, amen. hallelujah hallelujah amen, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Bless Thank you, God. Bless everyone that's on the line tonight. Before I, um, I'm, if you're on mute, I'm just going to ask everyone to come off mute for one minute. If you're on mute, just open up your, come on out of mute. Just turn your camera on, just mute. And everyone, just give the Lord a hand tonight. Everyone, just bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Amen. 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 Come on. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless Yes. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I feel victory for every couple tonight. I feel victory for those who are not married. I believe that God is going to send you the right person and God is just preparing you. Thank you for coming. God is preparing you because greater is coming. Anybody believe that greater is coming? Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. amen. Thank you, Lord. He said so. He said so. Here for victory for every couple. You are blessed and you are, come on, God put you together. Don't let the enemy separate you. Amen. 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 Yet to come. Don't get discouraged. Things are going to happen, but fight. Stay committed to one another and fight love. Love wins all the time. Amen? Do you Amen. 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 Love wins Amen. all the time. And the way how the world talks about love, we're talking about God's love because that's different. Amen? That's Amen. Amen. God is good. God's love is good. So I love you all. Thank you for joining me.
this before we pray, you all have been faithful. I appreciate you all. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. And when you are praying, please remember to pray for me too. Okay? Yes. All right. All right. All right. And we yeah. too. I desire. This is something that I love to do. I desire to do that much God has me to do. Thank you for those in the chat room. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Pray for me, guys. Pray for me that I will, you know, continue to do what God will have me to do. I hope that you are blessed by these series. I do have a YouTube page in case you missed one night. It's called Lady Tanya Brown. You can catch all of the videos over there. I have other videos that I've done. And so if you want to catch those videos, you can catch them on my YouTube page on Facebook Live. They're still there. So God bless you all. I love you all. And remember, don't fight each other, but come together. Fight, and fight me. Your enemy. Yes. Your husband, your wife is not your enemy. I want you to remember that. The enemy is the devil who wants you to stay mad at your husband, at your wife. But don't stay mad. Stay committed. Amen. Everybody going to stay committed? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. It's a must. It's a That's lifetime. For lifetime. You're in this for life. You're in this for life. So I don't want to hear nothing else. We're in this for life. And we're going to do marriage, not our way, but God's way. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Got to remember Jesus is the ultimate husband. Yes, so. he is. Yes, he mm -hmm. is. He was committed to us. He called us yep. So then oh, yeah. you can definitely follow in his footsteps. I hope you were blessed. I love you all. God bless you. And continue to strive and to fight for your marriage. Love you, love you, love you. Love you. All right. Good night. Have a blessed Bye. night. Bye, Deep everyone. Stay safe. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bless you, sister. Bless you. Bless you, Bless you, brother. <laughs> God bless you, Facebook. Love you all. Thank you for joining in. I love you. I love you. Hope you were blessed. They were saying that it was frozen, but I think it stopped now. It was a little frozen on Facebook.